because uh, Lincoln printed so much money. Exactly, that. exactly. That's right. But once that ended, but basically there was no inflation other than, uh, other than that during that short period of time. I mean, a loaf of bread was a loaf. Of course, the same thing. People could plan their lives. Today, they've, they, they've planned inflation. Now you have two parents working. Uh, they, can, they can't afford to, take, to, to pay for their family anymore. The kids are going to state-run schools now. The kids are being indoctrinated how to think. They're being given Ritalin. They're being given all these drugs. The whole country's being dumbed down. It's all because of the Federal Reserve System. And the Federal Reserve System and these bankers are responsible for the demise of America. And if we ever want to win this battle, you must shut down the Federal Reserve System. And we must shut down these bankers and restore sound money to this country. Will you talk a little bit about some of the families that own the private Federal Reserve, the stock in it? And I mean, obviously, you say you're not a big expert on Bilderberg Group, but you talk about how it's the same system worldwide. It is the same families. They meet and kind of set the policy each year, and then it goes to the Royal Institute of International Affairs in England, it goes to the CFR in the U.S., and then these are their management bodies uh, where they wield control, uh, really the de facto Congresses, uh, over the nation. So, I, I mean, I would like to get you to speak some about the families that own and run the Federal Reserve, and if you can't well, connect it into these other international bodies. Well, I, I can't speak to those families, because the, 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 I can only speak about... You know, what I know for fact, I, 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 everything else is speculation, and I don't like to speculate. You know, I know about Rockefeller because I, I was friends with him. We would talked about it, and I can tell you firsthand. What did what Rockefeller tell you about the Federal Reserve and their family owning part of it? Well, uh, he said the New York Fed is the main controlling interest of the Federal Reserve System. They control the bulk of it. So the New York Fed is really the Federal Reserve System. Even though there's 12 different banks, it's run by the New York Fed. And the New York Fed is basically the Federal Reserve System. So who's ever running the New York Fed is where, and, and the families that control it, control the New York Fed. And they're, they're, they're the main uh, uh, engine behind the Federal Reserve System. And that's a wing of the Bank of England. Yeah, well, the, well, the Bank of England and the Federal Reserve are partners, you know. And the Bank of England is a private bank, and so is the Bundesbank in Germany. And the Bank of, all the, all the banks of the G8 countries are all private banks. The private central banks. And look, what happened in Europe? Didn't Europe vote down uh, the European Constitution? Yes. They're still doing it. Didn't they vote down the euro? They're still doing it. They don't care what the people vote. They do whatever they want to do. What we want doesn't matter anymore. It's their agenda. It's their plans that matter. Is it that prima facie evidence of a tyranny? Well, we, we, there's no question we're in tyranny. There's no question we're living in a world where... Uh, uh, the American citizen is no longer a free individual human being to do uh, the things that they wish to do. You know, we're, we're slaves, and, and, and it's getting worse. What do we got to do to bring these people down? Got you, in my opinion, uh, you must shut down the Federal Reserve System. And I think that um, there has to be an uprising. There has to be an uprising. People have to stand up. I, I can't do it alone. You can't do it alone, Alex. And uh, we need to get a majority of people, not a majority of people, but... Uh, it was 5% won the war against the British, a highly motivated group. But I agree, people have got to get angry first. I mean, not just, yeah, yeah, we know it's corrupt and that lack of discipline. we got to get pissed. People don't seem to have the courage to do what they have to do, you know? I want to say you've got a lot of courage. Well, thank you. You know, I don't know if I have a lot of courage. I just have well, a... Well, I want to thank you for what you're doing for my family. Well, I have a sense of conscience and I have a sense of justice. You know, I, I get nervous about what I do, but I do it because there's no other choice. You know, I, I, I couldn't live with myself if I didn't do it, you know. But the fact of the matter is, I mean, I've ostracized myself pretty much from Hollywood. You know, people are afraid to deal with me in Hollywood a lot because of what I do and the things I say. You know, I don't, I don't go along with routines. You know, a lot of people in Hollywood know the truth. They, they're not willing to stand up and speak about it. You know, and I know many of them have seen my movie. You know, and they know I'm right, and they won't talk about it because everybody's afraid. Everybody's afraid because the federal they, they they think that this money they get, these Federal Reserve notes, are really money, and they think they have a comfortable lifestyle, and they're afraid to change. You know, they're afraid to stand up for what's right. And until people are willing to to stand up and have the courage to do what they need to do, it's not going to change. And uh, hopefully. Uh, you know, uh, what, you, what you're doing, what I'm doing, what other people like us are doing can affect the change that people will stand up and say, hey, I've had enough. The thing is, we have one, we have one advantage. They need us to cooperate. 
So if we don't cooperate with them, they can't win. And so they always need our cooperation to go along with their programs. So they try to sell us. Right. They try to sell us. Democracy, this majority says this, believe in this, do this, do that. The, 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 the war on terror, you know, we've got to be scared. You know, they're always trying to do things to sell us so that will go along with them. And once we learn not to cooperate with them, then we win the game. And that's the point. Don't cooperate with them. Don't go along with the program anymore. Stop it. Join forces. You and I should run for president and vice president and take over this country and bring freedom back to this country. You know, that's what it's takes. Like two people like you and I, statesmen, who believe in freedom, who believe in Thomas Jefferson and the Constitution and the founding fathers to, to make this country whole again. Because right now it's in the grip of the evil ones, you know. And uh, the only way to stop that is for good men to stand up. Was Edmund Burke said, evil can only thrive when good men do nothing? Yes. Right? That, well, that we, we, we have, we've got to do something. That's what it is, you know. Uh, silence is golden, but when it comes to your freedom, it's yellow. You know, we have to stop being scared. We have to stand up and do what's necessary to take back, to stop these bankers, these elite, this government full of lies, congressmen full of liars, you know. People take, take destroying our borders, you know, creating a government. I mean, Im imagine this. You have, here you, have, you are in America, and they're combining America, Canada, and Mexico into one country, the North American Union, and the American people don't know anything about it. It's not even in the press. They'd rather talk about Rosie O'Donnell and Donald Trump calling each other names than discussing the fact that we're merging into one country. And the press doesn't even report it. Or that Paris Hilton doesn't wear underwear. Yeah, Britney Spears. But, I mean, who cares? I mean, the fact of the matter happens to be that that tells you how controlled the media is. Here you are combining America, Canada, and Mexico into one country, and you don't see it in the press. Unless maybe it's Lou Dobbs. But you don't see it in the press. You just don't it see it. It should be the top story so, everywhere. Everywhere, and not a word about it, really. Why? That tells you there's the evidence that it's controlled. They don't want the American people to know what's going on. That's why they don't protect our borders. That's why we're losing our Constitution the very document that secures our freedoms. There is a rising tide against it. There is a rising tide, but we have to mobilize. We have to mobilize. And we have to get all the good people in this country to stand together and say, I'm not going to take it anymore. Well, I think if you analyze the situation, and if you realize that since the Federal Reserve has come into being in 1913, illegally, without a constitutional amendment, by bribing a few senators during Christmas vacation, they turned over the most important power that the American government has, the crea creation and issuance of money, to a private bank. Through that private bank issuing money, they have destroyed this country. They have destroyed the purchasing power of the money in this country. They've created social programs that are destroying this country. Thanks to the work of Aaron Russo and Ron Paul and many others, folks are starting to find out who the real enemy is. Offshore private banking corporations that have engaged in a hostile corporate takeover of the United States and almost every other nation on the planet. And the private Federal Reserve is their beachhead here in the United States. Ron Paul has introduced H.R. 1207 that at time of taping has over 87 sponsors. Just to audit the private Federal Reserve that arrogantly says it's above all U.S. laws and above all three branches of government and that no law enforcement can investigate them. I mean, how asinine is that? How above the law is that? How ridiculous is that? Everybody else gets audited. Nobody else is above the law but them, this group of plutocrats, uh, this group of polycentric bankers that are setting up this neo-feudal world system. Now, they've taken over our government, both Republicans and Democrats. There's no difference anymore between the two parties. They control both parties. It doesn't matter to them which one wins, because who's ever running for president will be someone they anoint. OK, whether it's Hillary Clinton or John McCain running for president next year, which they're going to be people that are going to do what they want them to do. And the fact of the matter happens to be that you can't win an election unless you have enough money to win. They make sure who gets the money. The most important point is they control both parties. And the public continues to only focus in on the distraction of the left puppet and the right puppet instead of looking at the puppet masters. In fact, more and more of this is coming out. Top Senate Democrats, 
Bankers own the U.S. Congress. Senator Dick Durbin on Chicago radio station last week blurted out an obvious truth about Congress. This is from Salon, that despite being blindly obvious, it is rarely spoken. And, quote, the banks, hard to believe in a time when we're facing a banking crisis, that many of the banks created are still the most powerful lobby on Capitol Hill. And, frankly, they own the place. So there is one of the most powerful Democrats in the country, top Senate Democrat, saying bankers own the U.S. Congress. It's true. Let's admit it. Let's stop debating the two puppets they put out in front of us, the liberal puppet, the conservative puppet, and then every time we wake up to one of the puppets, they just replace it with another puppet. Let's look past the puppets to the puppet master above them that's controlling the puppets. That's all Aaron Russo and myself and Ron Paul and so many other people are saying. Let's get back to a culture of liberty versus tyranny, not this left-right diversion. You know, when folks are sick of Obama in four to eight years, 